So here is a fairly common exam question. We have a couple of molecules undergoing the same reaction, giving probably a very similar product, and the question is, which reaction proceeds faster? Well, first of all, it is probably a good idea to figure out what exactly is going on here. I can see that we are doing a reaction with a sodium hydride, which is a very strong base. So when it comes to our reaction, generally speaking, we are looking at the reaction where we have a halohydrin reacting with a sodium hydride. So the very first thing that is going to happen here is our hydride ion, being a very good base, going to come in and pull that proton off, giving us the following intermediate after our proton transfer. Now we have a nucleophile over here and we have an electrophilic atom uh, with the leaving group where my chlorine over here that is my leaving group so obviously we are going to have a reaction between these two kicking our leaving group out and giving us the following epoxide as the final product pretty simple right which means that in this reaction we are going to end up with the same product regardless which molecule we are going to start with and when it comes to the speed of our reaction the rate of our reaction it might be a surprise for you but i'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler here the top reaction is going to be extremely fast while the bottom reaction is actually going to be fairly slow so slow is the matter of fact that we can say it barely works at all. So what's going on there? How come one reaction is incredibly fast and another one is moving at the glacial pace? Well, let me make a little bit more space here so I can doodle around. And when it comes to reactions involving six-membered rings, most commonly you are going to be looking at the chair conformation. So I'm going to draw a chair conformation for the one on the top, and likewise, I'm going to draw a chair conformation for the one on the bottom. And I'm going to be drawing the most stable chair conformation right away. Now, when it comes to our reaction here, we are not going to have an OH group, we are going to have an alkoxide. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my eraser, get rid of that hydrogen and indicate the negative charge on my alkoxide here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to erase that hydrogen and indicate my negative charge there as well. So as I've mentioned before, we are going to be dealing with an intramolecular SN2 reaction where our oxygen is going to be coming in, reacting with our electrophile and kicking our leaving group out. And one important thing that we got to know about the SN2 reactions is that they require a backside attack which means that our nucleophile got to be able to attack the antibonding orbital that we have right over here at 180 degrees to where our leaving group is. And that is only possible if your leaving group is axial. So the leaving group absolutely must be axial for any kind of SN2 or E2 reactions in a six-membered ring. Otherwise, the antibonding orbital is buried in the middle of the molecule and is almost virtually inaccessible. So in the top case, where the reaction goes fast, the most stable chair conformation already have a perfect alignment of all of our groups with a perfect alignment of our orbitals. The bottom structure, however, is problematic. If I construct a Newman projection of this bond over here, then what I'm going to see on the front atom, I have the hydrogen over here, I have my chlorine to the left, and I have one of the carbon of the ring on the right side. So I'm just going to show it like that. Then on my back atom, I have another implicit hydrogen looking down. I have my oxygen over here on the left and on the right side I have another carbon from the ring so again I'm just going to represent it like that. So the oxygen should be hitting the carbon with the leaving group from this direction but obviously that is simply impossible. Which means that in order for my bottom molecule to actually undergo this reaction the molecule would have to first flip into the unfavorable unstable conformation and then the reaction would be possible. And considering how bulky the third butyl group is, well, that's just basically going to be impossible altogether, which means that the top reaction 
is already ready to go and it's super fast, the bottom reaction is almost impossible. So whenever you see a six-membered ring and it has anything to do with the reactivity, kinetics, rates, anything of that sort, almost every single time the question is going to be about the chair confirmations. So make sure you review those before going into tests so you don't get caught on something like that. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, hit that like button and let me know about that in the comments below. Check out this video next and I will see you next time.